In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted my converted Argyle Tall model. And even though I'm showing you how I painted this specific model, techniques here can be used for all Gal Warback models, especially for the mutated fleshy bits. I started off by applying a purple pre-shadow over a white base coat. The goal here is to hit all of the parts of the model that I want in the deepest shadow, and use some unpolluted violet ink as it will serve as a foundation for my deeper reds later on. This step is pretty much the exact opposite of the white ink pre-shade I normally do, but I do it this way as I like how purple looks as a shadow for red, and by applying this over white base coat, I skip a couple of steps to get that purple in there. I also apply some of this to the wings, but I'm going to completely skip how I painted the wings for this time around, as you'll see why in a couple of minutes. After I was happy with the purple pre-shade, I applied two coats of Scale 75 Deep Red over the entire model. You want to make sure that you apply even coats here, but the paint is a little bit thinned down as well. This is to ensure that you get a solid red coverage. Because the paint's a little transparent, some of the violet pre-shade will show through, as you can see here. Next up, add a little bit of Scale 75 Golden Skin into the Deep Red still in my paint cup, and use this mixture to apply general highlights over the red armor, as well as a little bit of heavier application onto the mutated fleshy parts. Personally, I prefer highlighting reds with skin tones as opposed to oranges and pinks, as the flesh tone mixes with reds will result in a color that still reads as red, just a little bit desaturated, or by adding yellow or white you can very easily start to get colors that don't look quite that red, and more into the either washed out pinkish chalky tones, or just pure orange. I also want to note here that I'm going a bit lighter in my highlights than I want for my final model, but this is because I'm planning on layering on inks later on, which will dial down the brightness. After I was finished with this highlight, I take some pure golden skin and spray this over the fleshy parts of the model. I really had no idea where I was going with these parts of the model at this step, but I figured that if I kept spraying colors, I'd eventually land on something that looked good. I also was not too concerned here if I had a bit of overspray onto the non-mutated parts of armor, as I figured any color modulation would help with selling the image that this dude was in constant state of change and that what was armor one moment might be flushed the next. Next up, I diluted some crimson ink about 10 parts thinner to 1 part ink and applied a couple of layers all over the armor. Once again though, I was a little bit careless about where I was spraying this, as I wanted some of the ink to land on the fleshy parts of the model. Much like before, my goal was to blend the two together, and because the ink is fairly transparent, it is really easy to get smooth gradients by applying the ink through an airbrush this way. Next up, I apply a layer of gloss varnish, and once that is dry, I slop on a ton of oil paint mixed with thinner over the entire model. I use black oil paint here as I think it looks really good over the red, but unfortunately, disaster was about to strike. You see, my normal painting process, as some of you might know, is that I apply a ton of oil paint over my entire model and then wipe the majority of it away with a makeup sponge remover. Unfortunately, for some reason, a lot of the oil paint here actually stained the underlying model, and no matter how I tried to wipe it off or how much mineral spirits I used, I couldn't get the black streaks away, as you can see here. So I was at a bit of a crossroad, and either uh, stop this project completely, or figure out how to push through this disastrous mistake and make it work. These black oil stains cover the majority of the wings, as well as a couple of splotches over parts of Argyle Tall's armor. So I figured I'd start by taking the armor first, it was a less daunting and I needed a quick win to build some momentum before moving on to the wings. I started off by spraying the model with matte varnish to really lock in the oils, and got to work. I also wanted to bust out my new, super-powered $20 Chinese knockoff airbrush, I knew I'd need to do some detail spraying on this, and this thing's actually pretty good. Well, kind of. I'm going to do a full video review of this next week, but for now I'll just say that I'm seriously blown away by how this thing sprays. The only downside is that I've not yet found a good way to clean it well enough to be used a second time. So yeah, it's great if you want to try out a kind of well-engineered $20 airbrush with a 0.3mm nozzle and get some really fine spraying patterns. But it might be a lot of work to clean out, and I'm going to do a few more experiments before my next video, but I would, uh... Tread carefully with this one. Anyways, I mixed up some deep red with crimson ink in my airbrush cup with some thinner and got to work applying this over my mistakes. I knew that it would be next to impossible to get the same colors I'd downed before, so instead I focused more on blending the oil stains in so they weren't quite so obvious. I did this by applying three or four layers of this thinned down paint mixture, and eventually the oil stains kind of faded away and left a very subtle dark spot where the oil stains were before that blended nicely into the previous red of the armor. I also sprayed the bony ridges of the wings with this mixture, as I thought it'd be cool to have those be red while the rest of the wing is black. So that's one mistake down. Now I just have to tackle the major problem with the wings. 
I started off by spraying the wing membranes with flat black, being careful to make sure that I left the red on the bony bits remaining. I then highlighted these with thinned down caspian blue and bearing blue. For both of these layers, I made sure to focus my airbrush spray cone only on the topmost parts of the wing, and also made sure to angle my airbrush in such a way that the natural ridges of the wings would remain in the shadows to get some easy highlights without doing much work. Because I was shooting this paint at a pretty low pressure, I think about 15 PSI, through a very small needle, I was able to carefully control my highlights here at a very nice gradient to the wings without much work. After I was happy with the wings, I decided I want the skin to be a little bit brighter. I used Scale by Pale Flesh for this, but I left my cup a little bit dirty, so some of the previous bearing blue was left in, which gave the Pale Flesh a very kind of dirty, dead skin tone. This was then thinned down slightly and applied sparingly over all the fleshy bits of the model. As I said before, I kind of built up these fleshy bits with various colors, as I really wanted them to have this kind of modeled, mutated, and otherworldly kind of warping appearance. And I figured by splashing on one more color like this, it would add some really interesting coloration to the model and blend a little bit better. I also sprayed this same mixture over the muscular parts of the wings of the backpack to give them a little more pop of color and blend them in more closely to the rest of the flesh on the model. For the final portion of the skin, I apply a couple thin layers of thinned down scales and dried birch, I don't know, probably about 50% paint, 50% water, over the highest parts of the musculature of the fleshy parts. This last layer really helps to provide a little more definition to the muscles and add a little more pop to the flesh. It also tones down the gray a bit from the previous layer to give a really interesting, but not quite right skin tone. I also painted the myriad of teeth, horns, claws, and other weird bony protrusions across the model. Pretty simply, just by doing a layer of scale to birch, a wash of Agrax Earthshade, and then two more quick highlights of birch and then pure white. Moving into the metallic parts of the model next, I first painted all of the shoulder pad trim and other silver areas on Argold Hall himself. First by doing a layer of heavy metal by scale 75, then two subsequent washes of Athonian camo shade and non oil. I really like adding more colors to my metals than normal, and the green here I think really ties into the model nicely as a contrasting color. So that's why I did it, and I'd highly encourage everyone to add a little more colors through washes, glazes, etc. into their metals. I then do two edge highlights of this metal trim, first with heavy metal and then speed metal, to bring up the luster again and add a little more pop of brightness. For the golden metallic parts of the Custodian weapons, I wanted these to feel pretty old and weathered, so I decided to go with my kind of old antique gold recipe, which starts with a base of scales of necro gold and a very rough highlight of dwarven gold applied over top of that. I then wash the gold with a layer of Athonian camo shade, and once that's dry, I apply another glaze of Magos purple over it. Both these colors I find combine together to get a very nice patina look to the metal. It makes it look aged and a bit worn. I then go back and highlight this with Peridot Alchemy to bring up the luster one more time and to add a little bit of coldness to the otherwise warm gold color at its highest points where the light would be most saturated. For the blades of the weapons, I decided to paint them in a true metallic style as I wanted them to have a bit of contrast, but I didn't want to spend the time it would take to do a fully blended power weapon effect. So to do this, I started off by painting the entirety of the blade with heavy metal and roughly highlighting it with speed metal and then white alchemy. I'll be glazing over this next, so I'm not too concerned about how smooth the transitions are at this stage, but I'm careful to place my highlights in a way that makes sense to me. In effect, I'm looking to highlight the different planes of the blade edges alternative to each other. So if the bottom part of the blade edge is highlighted, I want to have the part right above it in shadows. This is a little confusing here, but it'll become more apparent as I painted my shades next. For this glaze, I used some fairly thin down abyssal blue and just gradually built up layers over the parts of the sword that I went darkest. When brushing this on though, I make sure to start over the lighter parts of the sword and then pull my brush towards the areas I went darkest, and this is because the paint will settle more at the end of my brush stroke and this will help to smooth the transitions out. I kind of lost track of how many layers I did here, but you can keep going until you get the look that you want. I think it took me probably, I don't know, three or four. Finally, I edge highlight the blade edge with white alchemy, as I find this step is key to making the blade look really sharp, 
and like an actual sword as opposed to a kind of flat metal stick. For any model, the head is going to be the main focal point, and I wanted to make sure that on Argo Tall there was something that really drew the viewer's attention to there. To accomplish this, I decided to give him green glowing eyes, which I did by first painting the eyes white and applying some green fluorescent paint over them. Once the fluorescent paint is dry, I then washed them with Beale Tan Green to produce some more definition before applying yet another layer of white and then one more layer of fluorescent green to bring up the pop of color again. This is a really easy way to add a pop of color to your model with only a few simple steps. So that's pretty much it for the model, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I also took a lot of video of me converting this model, but I'm not sure if I want to do a video or not, as I've never done a conversion video before, and not sure if it's worth the time it would take to actually edit it down, which is about five to eight hours. But if you're interested, leave a comment below, and I'll get around to editing it if there are enough comments, um, which is like one honestly. But anyways, as always, thanks for watching, and hobby on.